everyone, it's Emily bringing you another micro class. This week I thought it'd be fun to focus on ferns. Um, I'll admit that before I started working at Grass River, which as you know is a very, um, is a nature, natural area that's very heavy on the wetland ecosystems, um, I did not know a lot about ferns. But since then I've become pretty excited about them. Um, they're neat because they are, um, ferns as a group are 400 million years old. To put that in perspective, the dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. So they're super old as a group of plants. Um, and they used to be the dominant plant type in our forests after, um, or before they got outcompeted by gymnosperms, which are um, like cone bearing plants, like pines and spruces, and then angiosperms, which are flowering plants. Um, but they're super neat in that uh, they do not have seeds. They reproduce by spores um, or vegetatively, and the spores are often clustered on the underside of the leaves um, in little sacs called sporangia, um, and then those sacs are clustered on sori um, under the leaves, which are visible to the naked eye. And those, none of them are really reproducing quite yet since it's so early in the season, but you'll be able to see that later on. Um, as the season progresses and let's see I guess um, one thing I should mention early on is that one of the easiest ways to identify ferns is based on how many times they're divided or how many times the fronds are cut um, so I'm going to show you guys an example of what I mean by that so here we have a bracken fern and this is cut three times or we call it being thrice divided three times divided so this is one frond right here, one frond, and that is cut once, twice, and then I don't know if you can see these tiny little leaflets are also divided. They're also compound. So cut once, twice, three times, and that's a really easy way to start um, separating out groups of ferns that will go, go a long way towards identification. But also for bracken ferns, we should talk about um, that they are very tall. In general, you can see this one, it's very tall. They'll get to about waist height um, in the summer. And they're, um, the fronds are often divided in threes. So we have this triangular frond, this triangular blade, and then this triangular blade right here. So three blades that are all triangle shaped. And there isn't another type of fern that's this tall that has those three triangular blades. Um, and bracken fern is probably the most common fern we have here in Michigan. Um, it loves to grow in open areas um, and it likes full sun, which is not what we typically think of as a fern characteristic. Um, and it, love, it can grow in poor soils too, so like along roadsides as well as in openings and clearings. All right, so here we are on the fern trail, very aptly named. Um, and I mentioned in the earlier um, section that ferns reproduce by spores, but they can also reproduce vegetatively, um, meaning by rhizomes, um, which creep under the ground and then pop up a new fern right there. Um, so those are, that means that those ferns are all clones of the parent fern. Um, and that causes a lot of ferns to grow um, in dense um, patches or colonies, which is what we're seeing here with this sensitive fern. Um, it's growing kind of in a little patch right here, and sensitive ferns like to reproduce rhizomatously. Um, and it's called sensitive fern because it's very sensitive to frost and to drought. Um, at the first early frost in fall, it just dies back. It's very sensitive. Um, and it's unique, um, unlike most other ferns, in that it's only once divided. Um, so you can see here's a frond and then it's just cut once right there and then the um it has very wavy margins but they're not divided so just once divided um and it's a very light bright green sort of color um and it's important for wildlife because the fertile fronds so this fern actually has different fronds, different types of fronds. Um, it has vegetative fronds, so the leaves like this, and then it'll have fertile fronds which have the spores on them and um, those persist through the winter time 
Um, and they stick up out of the snow, really common sight to see in the winter, and wild turkeys and other wildlife um, really love to eat them in the winter. It's a very important source of food for them in those lean times. Um, yeah, so that's sensitive fern. Okay, here we have one of my favorite ferns. It's tiny! It's so diminutive and it really won't grow much more than this. It never really gets higher than about nine inches. This is the oak fern and it looks like a mini bracken fern in that um, the frond is divided into three triangular blades. Um, it's very bright yellow green. Um, and you can see that the blades are very strongly horizontal. They're almost parallel to the ground. They're in a very horizontal plane that's very characteristic of our little tiny oak fern. Okay, so here we have cinnamon fern, and it is just starting to unfurl from its fiddlehead. Um, that's what all ferns are called when they're still rolled up like this. Um, and you can see that the fiddleheads are very furry. Um, it's like a whitish, rusty brown sort of fur, um, and it also um, is fuzzy down um, on the stems, down here on the stipe, um, and that's a characteristic of, sense of um, cinnamon fern. It will retain all this fuzz throughout the whole growing season on, um, the, on the stipe and also um, on the underside of where the leaflets um, meet the stem. And uh, you can see, I just picked this up, this is um, a, a stem from last year, um, that it's very fuzzy right here. Very fuzzy. Um, and also, uh, it's called cinnamon fern because, um, for, this, for this reason, because the, this fur is kind of cinnamon colored, but also the fertile frond, so um, like sensitive fern, cinnamon fern has a uh, Frond, a fertile frond that looks very different than its vegetative fronds. So the fertile frond grows up from the middle of the clump, because um, cinnamon fern grows in a clump like this, almost like a vase shape. The fertile frond will grow up from the center and it will be tipped with a very cinnamon colored, um, I guess that's where the spores are. Um, so cinnamon colored spores in the, in the sori, in the sporangia. Um, and if you want a great example of a cinnamon fern, um, I right now am right near the bench on the new boardwalk just east of Trail Post 18, and there are two fantastic examples of cinnamon ferns right here. And when these um, fiddleheads unfurl, the leaves will be twice divided, so cut two times. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope I inspired you to fall in love with ferns like I have. They're just so delicate and lush and beautiful. Um, and I should mention that these are not the only ferns we have at Grass River. We have lots more like maidenhair fern and um, wood ferns and marsh ferns and bulbwood ferns and New York ferns and royal ferns and lots more. So this is a great place to come check out your ferns if you feel so inclined. Um, thanks for joining me on this Grass River micro class, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!